Hello everyone, um, my name is Amit Jaiswal and one of the ED consultants. Um, in this presentation, I'm going to talk about basics of point of care ultrasound in assessing heart and IVC. I'm thankful to Vishal Tokia who has allowed me to use his presentation. He's one of the intensivists at Kingston Hospital. So there are different protocols available for us to assess the heart. Uh, the common ones are field, FATE, FIS, also known as FUSIC, ROSH and ACES. The fundamental principle behind assessment in using either of these protocols remains the same. So bedside echo is done to answer why the patient presenting to the acute setting is in shock and or breathless. Is, is my patient in shock because there is a depletion of volume or is it because the heart is not functioning well or if there is a problem pushing the blood out of the heart. So before we move forward I would like you to understand that the screen or orientation in echocardiogram is slightly different from uh, what we have learned about scanning other things such as fast scan or triple A assessment or IV access. Here the dot on the screen is on towards patient's left side while we have learned that when we do scans such as fast scan or any other scan we keep the dot on patient's right side which means it is exactly opposite um, I don't know why this has been done but um, the cardiologists like to keep it that way so let's understand the uh, windows available for us to scan the heart uh, remember, we are going to use a phased array uh, probe which has got low frequency. We do not use curvilinear probe obviously because it has got large footprint and the larger the footprint, more the ribs it will section and it will cause lots of acoustic shadow. So the first view available is called parasternal view. It has got long axis and short axis. So we put the probe in the second, third or fourth intercostal space on the left side of the sternum and then we have got long axis and then short axis. The second view is the apical view where we put the probe it around the apex. Third one is the subcostal view. Uh, the subcostal view is similar to what we do when we when we scan the heart in, in a fast scan. The heart scan is incomplete if you have not assessed the IVC and the lung basis. So let's talk about the first view, which is parasternal long axis view, where the probe marker is towards the patient's right shoulder, and the probe is kept in second or third or fourth intercostal space on the left side of the sternum. And I'm expecting to get an image like this, where I should be able to see right ventricle on top, left ventricle at the bottom, left atrium, and aorta. I should also be able to see mitral valve and aortic valve. I'm not expected to see the apex of the heart. Now this view is, is important because it gives an idea about this right ventricle and left ventricle ratio. It also allows to see if there is any pericardial effusion and also gives an idea about the global LV function. So in this model, I'm trying to demonstrate a parasternal long axis where the probe marker is towards the patient's right shoulder. So if I take a section, I'm expecting the heart to appear something like this. So I've got two sections here, but on the screen, instead of this one, I'll be seeing this on the monitor. So let's understand this one. So here, here we have got the heart, we have got apex, right ventricle, left ventricle, left atrium, and the left ventricle outflow through the aorta. Understand some examples. So here I have got a parasternal long axis with a left atrium, mitral valve, left ventricle, then outflow through the aorta, then you have got R, V and interventricular septum. Let's understand this example. So here we can see LA, LV, RV and aorta. We saw that the interventricular septum is there but the left ventricle is completely emptying. So I must say the left ventricle function is good here. In this example, 
let's try to understand so we have got la lv and if you notice carefully the left ventricle was barely moving so this is a sick heart coming on to parasternal short axis so for we are still at at the parasternum but now the pro marker has been moved from right shoulder to left shoulder by rotating it by 90 degree so at this point i'm cutting the heart in transverse transverse way in a short axis so i'm expecting you to see the left ventricle as a donut surrounded by a crescent of right ventricle so to reiterate again so we were in flux view now we have rotated the probe by 90 degree and we are cutting the heart in transverse plane um, in transverse plane we can cut the heart either close to the mitral valve or close to the apex of the ventricle so we can cut at different section so in this view we are going to see um, the left ventricle here as a donut surrounded by right ventricle uh, we can clearly see the right ventricle is a crescent and left ventricle is a donut in this view we can uh, clearly make out which part of the left ventricle is not working is it towards the septum towards the anterior wall towards the posterior wall or towards the lateral wall um, in this example let's see what's happening so you can see the left ventricle is completely collapsing and squeezing all the blood out from here so you can say it's a good LV function now let's see what's happening here barely contracting so it's a sick heart so coming on to the uh, epi epical view we are going to put the probe here at the apex of the heart or around the apex of the heart in a way that we throw the sound waves from the apex towards the ventricle and and ending up into the atrium so we get an inverted image and because apex was the first to strike you get apex as the most superficial and atrium was the deepest now this view clearly gives a, an idea about how the left ventricle and right ventricle are appearing and what's the functionality and what's the size. It also gives an idea about the RA and LA. This is what I'm expecting. So let's understand this image. So now you would have noticed that the pro marker in echocardiogram is on the patient's left side. And when we are doing the apical view, the probe marker is also also on the left side. So this part will be the left of the patient. And this will be the right. So this will be left ventricle and left atrium. This is going to be right ventricle and right atrium. Now it gives a good idea about how the left ventricle chamber is appearing as compared to the right ventricle and what's the contractility and what's the ratio of the size. Coming on to a uh, subcostal view or subzephoid view, here we put the put the probe in the epigastric area with the dot pointing towards the patient's left side. Um, here we throw the sound waves through the liver and hits the ventricle first and then the atrium. So I'm expecting to get an inverted image where the right ventricle and right atrium on the top and the left ventricle and left atria at the bottom. This gives a good idea about the uh, comparison about the size of LV and RV. Also gives a clue about what's happening around the heart, if there is a, a pericardial fusion or not. Another view to understand how a uh, sub subzephoid view looks like. So I'm going to throw my sound waves first through the liver, then the ventricle, and then the atria. So my liver should be the most superficial structure on the uh, monitor followed by ventricles and the atria so an example of a subcostal view here we hit the sound wave first through the liver then the ventricle and the, the then the atria so you have got r v l v l a and r a and in the interventricular septum
moving on to assessment of IBC so while we are at epigastric uh, level we rotate the probe in a way that the dot is facing towards the patient's head and at this point we should be able to see um, IVC so during the assessment of IVC IVC will appear as a tubular structure with an anechoic fluid and I have to grossly see how my IVC is behaving the diameter of IVC is behaving when the patient is breathing in and out with in inspiration we create a negative pressure that sucks the blood towards the um, towards the heart so I'm expecting some collapsibility of the IVC if I'm not seeing any collapsibility it means there is a back pressure and and the patient is possibly in a, a fluid overload state so let's see the example now so you can see some 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 collapse of the IVC in this in this image so let's see this example you can see IVC is barely collapsing in the in the in the inspiration or expiration if you are interested in measuring the IVC collapsibility it has to be ideally measured at around 2 cm away from the heart or from the right atrium somewhere in this area and you measure the diameter of IVC in the inspiration and expiratory phase so putting all the information together so suppose my patient is in shock and I see my LV completely collapsing RV and LV diameter or uh, ratio is, is normal and my IVC is collapsing during uh, breathing then this patient is, is in hypovolemic shock on the other hand if patient in shock but LV is dilated and IVC is not collapsing this means there is a problem with the heart the heart is sick and uh, it's in cardiogenic so shock to summarize we have talked about uh, bedside echo the probe selection uh, windows available for us to assess uh, such as uh, parasternal long axis, short axis, apical view, um, subcostal view, assessing the IVC uh, collapsibility during breathing, and look at the lung basis to see if there is a fluid. Um, you will get more understanding when we do the practical session um, on the course. So, see you soon.